Hey there guys, Headphones Neil here, back with my final film review for Horror Film October 2020. So, for this particular review, it's going to be the 2006 film Silent Hill, based on the video game of the same name, starring Radha Mitchell as Rose, Sean Bean as her husband, and um, Lori Holden as the main police officer that... Um, turns out to be Rose's help towards the second half of the movie and I want to say jumping into it this film is probably my favorite film or video game to film adaptation next to Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat is more of the action fighting genre this is more on the horror side but I want to say that overall they both are pretty good and more on the positive side as far as video game to movie translations go. Mortal Kombat does have its flaws and having played that video game before I know that it's not it's by far it's not probably the best video game to movie translation ever but it does rank up there as far as ones that are generally tolerable to watch. As far as Silent Hill goes I have not played any of the video games but doing a little bit of research I found that it is probably one of the better translations mostly because it generally sticks to the um, styles, mannerisms, and overall translations of the video games but in um, movie format. So things like the Town of Silent Hill well done, you have the fire and ash that recreates the atmosphere from the video game and it takes a generally technological achievement from the video game and gives it a very visual and appealing look as far as the film goes. So in the film, or sorry, in the video game, the snowy and ashy and foggy look was created because of the look that they wanted to give, but because of technological um, barriers, they had to create that fog in real time so that they could create that look. And you would think that that's probably one of those things where they could have gone cheesy with it or the visuals are not generally well done but overall because of the ongoing fire and soot that's falling because of it you get that atmospheric look and overall it's very well done um the film also does create a very good translation as far as what's going on so we have the daughter of rose having these dreams about a town called silent hill and as it turns out rose's original form was the daughter of a lady who was living in the town and had an evil demon spirit living in her the town tried to um basically exercise the spirit and the spirit to save the goodness that was in rose's daughter or the original lady's daughter um dropped off her physical form that was good at the orphanage and she ended up turning into rose's daughter so that generally worked out well and then the reason rose was dreaming about or sorry rose's daughter was dreaming about silent hill is because she was trying to return to get her revenge on the town for her um, getting rid of her so overall that the general plot of the movie just worked um, it was well paced it was interesting enough it was this movie where Sean Bean's character didn't die so that was a good feeling there and overall I think I want to say compared to the prior films in the for the month it was generally well lit so it was overall very well done and the atmosphere was just it was visual, it was nice to see enough of the film that it created a good um, atmosphere and they brought in the music from the video game some of the end credits I think from Silent Hill 1 and 3 I'm not sure about number 2 but it all just worked so it made for an enjoyable film scary as it was or not really scary but suspenseful as it was and they brought in some of the characters like the triangle conehead guy so that was interesting the zombie characters were uh, well um, created and they were scary enough so there's not really much else to say the movie is enjoyable to watch as far as a video game to film translation and it stands up on its own so even if you've played never played a video game like me then you realize that the film is generally suspenseful and it works so I'd probably give it a grade of around a A to a B I couldn't find anything that I disliked about it but um, overall if you have never played the game then you're not gonna didn't feel like I was missing out on much which is kind of one of those things in retrospect compared to the other movie I liked for the month Resident Evil where a lot of the elements of Resident Evil felt like you had to have played the video game or you have to have some sort of passing knowledge in order for the game to work or for or the film to work 
or to care about any of the characters or the locations or anything like that. With Silent Hill, it's one of the things where you... It's kind of... It felt, and thinking about it now, it feels kind of like a Twilight Zone episode where you have the main characters living and you have some connection to something that they don't... You know, the characters don't know about. They pass through some sort of portal into a Twilight Zone area of Silent Hill. So it kind of worked... Or it works on that front, so... Not having played the video game, as I mentioned, it um, gen- it was well presented so that it worked on its own regardless of whether you played the video games or not. Um, so it, I'm glad I watched Saved It For Last because it generally makes for a... Generally it's a good film to watch just so um, we're clear on that for the, the final time. So that's all there is for this review. The acting was well done. Um, I kind of wanted more Sean Bean, but... Having him more in the film probably would have taken away from the plot line, so it was good that it was just a mother and daughter. But it would have been interesting to see that, in his, like, or as far as his plot lines go, to have him do the research, have him come to the same conclusions that um, Rose did as she talked to the priests and the priestesses and the nuns and all of that, and as she learned more information, and then have Sean Bean come in to fill her in on the rest of it, as far as what happened, what the fires about, with the law enforcement and save their daughter and have a live happily ever ever live, live happily ever after from there so that's the, really the bulk of it so that's probably why I wouldn't give it an A just because having more Sean Bean's always a good thing but it doesn't neg- it doesn't neg- negatively affect the film by not having them there so if out of the four films of the movie in the month that I reviewed, I probably would recommend definitely watching Silent Hill from their Resident Evil and maybe the um, subsequent sequels. I haven't seen any of them, so I can't vouch for them, but I would say that they are worth watching based on the reviews and general um, reviews and ratings that you that I've seen online. They, they're not necessarily the best of films, but they are from what I've read, they are pretty good and true, generally true to the uh, video games. Doom was okay, but I'll jump into that in a um, little bit as far as why I'm holding off that recommendation. But Alone in the Dark is definitely the worst of the films, and I can see why that definitely or why that has the lowest rating of the um, group. So Alone in the Dark is pass is a movie I would say pass on. It does have a sequel, so maybe at some point I'll watch that and the sequel to Silent Hill. So they're both. Um, aptly named Silent Hill 2 and Alone in the Dark 2 so maybe at some point I'll watch those but this is going to be one of those things where I'm not going to jump out to go watch them uh, specifically so that's all there is for this particular review so um, the reason I'm holding off on Doom is because or the, the follow up for the, my Doom recommendation is because I finally finished my first full playthrough of Doom 1 from 1993 and it's notably going to be the ultimate doom for Android. So I did get through all four chapters. I finished the final bosses of all of them. So the final review for uh, horror October or scary stuff for October is going to be the doom video game. And my thoughts on it now having played it for the first time after all these years. Um, and kind of getting an idea of what all the levels were about and the playthrough and all the various characters. Um, so from there, once I get finish that review, I'm also going to include a bonus review and compare the video game to the film and what I think they should have done with the film in order for it to have been a better uh, or better received film. And the, the a bit of minor spoiler alert, but what generally would have solved it, it was a bigger budget to accommodate some of the things that. I will recommend and that is because we have two big name actors in the film well I guess three technically uh, with The Rock, Rosamund Pike and Carl Urban but uh, what I ex- expected them to do now having played through the first game definitely would have increased the budget but with minor tweaks would have been would have made for a better film and generally well received of a film so that's all there is for this particular review so look out for the Doom video game review coming within the next week or so. But that's for all there is for this review. You can find me on Twitter at PatelN01 to give your own feedback, recommendations, um, 
and things like that. The website is pateln01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show. But um, that's all for this episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.